This one exercise helped my piano play more than any other exercise I ever learned in all my years of school. And the best part about it is you don't even need a piano. Hi, my name is Dr. Ryan Kellen. I'm the creator of Gospel On The Go and Piano by Pictures. And it is my mission in life to help people who believe that piano playing is not for them, that they're not talented, that it's too hard, discover the joy of actually learning how to play their favorite songs. And we do that with our uh, picture notation and I'll tell you about in just a sec. But first let's get to the exercise. So actually, like I said, you do not need a piano to complete this exercise. All you need is a surface. And uh, the reason people find piano playing so difficult, one of the reasons, is because our brain isn't used to sending messages to just one finger, okay? So let me explain. When you uh, open up a door, you grab a doorknob and you turn it, right? Or if you pick up a pencil, you use all your fingers to pick up the pencil at once. Same thing with a fork, if you shake somebody's hand. So all the different things that we do with our hand, our brain is communicating and all the fingers move at once. And then when we get to piano playing, Obviously, we need different fingers to do different things. They're not always all going to go down at the same time. And so our brain has to learn how to communicate with our hand in a different way. And that is what this exercise is all about. It's called a finger independence exercise. Um, so what you're going to want to do is find a hard surface and you're going to want to curve your fingers like you're going to play piano. But again, you don't have to do this on a piano. You can do this on a desk. You can do this anywhere. When I was in high school and I got really into piano playing, and my teacher told me about this and I discovered that it started working for me, I would do it during class. <laughs> so uh, if you wanna do that, that's totally fine. But, so put your hand, curve your fingers, and just lift your thumb up, okay? Just lift your thumb up and leave all your other fingers curved like they're playing a key. And then bring your thumb down really hard, like you're really striking a note, okay? Do it again. Do this for like 10 times. And the best way to do this is to kind of like have your thumb extended really high, see how my thumb is high in the air, and feel kind of the tension there, and then you bring it down hard, like you're playing like you're playing a note on the piano. Then do this after you've done that 10 times, do the same thing with your index finger. Bring it down, bring it down, and notice I'm getting it up and I'm keeping it straight, and then I bring it down, and you hear that like thump. Let's do the middle finger now. When I say do it 10 times, I'm just doing a few on each finger because I think you get the point. Now when you get to your index finger, things are going to feel a little weird. So I can lift mine up pretty high. Uh, you probably, uh, if you're just starting this, will only be able to lift it up a little bit and that's okay. You're going to want to keep doing it and over time you will get higher with your fourth finger. So the reason the fourth finger is so difficult is because it shares a tendon with a pinky. And so when your fourth finger moves, your pinky really wants to move. In fact, I like to dig my pinky into the surface of whatever I'm doing. It helps. And then pinky. Okay, and you do the same thing with your left hand. And if you're right-handed, uh, your left hand should be a little bit more difficult, but you go through and you do 10 on each finger, lifting it high, having tension, and then bringing it down. Same thing here. And your fourth finger should be difficult. You know, it's not a bad idea if you're doing 10 reps on each finger to do 15 on your on your uh, ring finger because it is really difficult. We call that the fourth finger in piano playing, right? And your pinky will also kind of feel a little bit difficult, but it will be easier than your fourth finger. Once you've done that on a hard surface uh, a bunch of times, it's great to put your hand in like a five finger C position. So you find a C on your piano, that's the note behind the two black notes if you're brand new to this. And you play C, D, E, F, G, and then you go through and play 10 times on each finger. So just like I did on the hard surface, right? And then while the finger is up, my other fingers are holding down the other keys. So that's very important that the other ones do. 
And when you do this, your fingers are gonna to wanna to move, they're gonna to wanna to go all over the place. You're gonna be like, wait, what? <laughs> why is this so hard? Because it seems like something so simple, right? And again, it's because your brain is not used to communicating with your fingers one at a time. And this communication between your brain and your fingers is essential for piano playing. So it will get much, much easier as you do this more and more. And again, if you've never heard of me, uh, I used to be a university professor and then I discovered this new way to learn how to play the piano that is kind of based on guitar tabs, kind of based on a few things. But the punchline is that even if you don't have any experience or talent, you can learn your favorite songs in 10 minutes. Um, that, that's my claim and it is true. Lots of students, thousands of students have experienced this. And uh, right now we're giving away a few of our books for free. So these have classics, this has Silent Night, this has Jingle Bells, Amazing Grace. You can get that in the, uh, in the bio or in the link attached to this video. Thank you so much for uh, being here. I'm excited to show you more about the Piano by Pictures method. There's more information on it through that link as well. And happy playing and hope you have a great day.